MS an exam for musculoskeletal problems. Question 1. You are initiating a nursing care plan for a patient with osteoporosis. All of these nursing interventions apply to the nursing diagnosis risk for falls. Which intervention should you delegate to the nursing assistant? A. Identify environmental factors that increase risk for falls. B. Monitor gait, balance, and fatigue level with ambulation. C. Collaborate with physical therapy to provide patient with walker. D. Assist the patient with ambulation to bathroom and in halls. Answer, D. Assisting with activities of daily living is within the scope of the nursing assistant's practice. The other three interventions require additional educational preparation and are within the scope of practice of licensed nurses. Focus, Delegation, Supervision Question 2. You are preparing to teach a newly diagnosed patient with osteoporosis about strategies to prevent falls. Which of these points will you be sure to include? Choose all that apply. A. Wear a hip protector when ambulating. B. Remove throw rugs and other obstacles at home. C. Exercise will help build your strength. D. You should expect a few bumps and bruises when you go home. E. When you are tired, you should rest. <laughs> MS an exam for musculoskeletal problems. Question 3. You discover all of these assessment findings when admitting a patient with Paget's disease. Which finding indicates that the physician should be notified? A. The patient has bowing of both legs and the knees are asymmetric. B. The base of the patient's skull is invaginated platybasia. C. The patient is only 5 feet tall and weighs 120 pounds. D. The patient's skull is soft, thick, and larger than normal. Answer, B. Platabasia bacillar skull invagination causes brain stem manifestations that threaten life. Patients with Paget's disease are usually short and often have bowing of the long bones that results in asymmetric knees or elbow deformities. Their skull is typically soft thick and enlarged. Focus Prioritization Question 4. As charge nurse you observe the LPN, LVN providing all of these interventions for the patient with Paget's disease. Which action requires that you intervene? A. Administers 600 mg of ibuprofen to the patient. B. Encourages the patient to perform PT recommended exercises. C. Applies ice and gentle massage to the patient's lower extremities. D. Reminds the patient to drink milk and eat cottage cheese. MS an exam for musculoskeletal problem. Answer, C. Application of heat, not ice, is the appropriate measure to help reduce the patient's pain. Ibuprofen is useful to manage mild to moderate pain. Exercise prescribed by the PT is non-impact in nature and provides strengthening for the patient. A diet rich in calcium promotes bone health. Focus, Delegation, Supervision Question 5. As charge nurse you are making assignments for the day shift. Which patient would you assign to the nurse who has been pulled from the post-anesthesia care unit because for the day? A. A 35-year-old patient with osteomyelitis who needs teaching prior to hyperbaric oxygen therapy. B. A 62-year-old patient with osteomyelitis who is being discharged to a long-term care facility. C. 
a 68-year-old patient with osteoporosis and a new orthotic device whose knowledge of use of this device must be assessed. D. A 72-year-old patient with Paget's disease who has just returned from surgery for total knee replacement. Answer, B. Platabasia bacitha. Answer, D. The PICA nurse is very familiar with the assessment skills necessary to monitor a newly post-operative patient. The other patients need care from nurses familiar with musculoskeletal related nursing care, to provide teaching, assessment, and report to the long-term care facility. Focus, Assignment Question 6. You delegate taking vital signs to an experienced nursing assistant. The patient has been diagnosed with osteomyelitis. Which vital sign do you want the nursing assistant to report immediately? A. Temperature 99.90 F. B. Blood pressure 136.80. C. Heart rate 96 slash minute. D. Respiratory rate 24 slash minute. <laughs> Answer, A. An elevated temperature indicates infection and inflammation. This patient needs for antibiotic therapy. The other vital signs are normal or high normal results. Focus, Delegation, Supervision Question 5. As charge nurse you are making assignments for the day shift. Which patient would you assign to the nurse who has been pulled from the post-anesthesia care unit because for the day? A. A 35-year-old patient with osteomyelitis who needs teaching prior to hyperbaric oxygen therapy. B. A 62-year-old patient with osteomyelitis who is being discharged to a long- Answer, C. Application of heat, not ice, is the appropriate measure to help reduce the patient's pain. Ibuprofen is useful to manage mild to moderate pain. Exercise prescribed by the PT is non-impact in nature and provides strengthening for the patient. A diet rich in calcium promotes bone health. Focus, Delegation, Supervision Question 8. You are providing nursing care for a patient with carpal tunnel syndrome CTS who is preparing for surgery. Which intervention should you delegate to the nursing assistant? A. Initiate placement of a splint for immobilization during the day. B. Assess the patient's wrist and hand for discoloration and brittle nails. C. Assist the patient with daily self-care measures such as bathing and eating. D. Test the patient for painful tingling in the four digits of the hand. MSN exam for musculoskeletal problems. Question 5. As charge nurse you are making assignments for the day shift. Which patient would you assign to the nurse who has been pulled from the post-anesthesia care unit because for the day? A. A 35-year-old patient with osteomyelitis who needs teaching prior to hyperbaric oxygen therapy. B. A 62-year-old patient with osteomyelitis who is being discharged to a long-term care facility. C. A 68-year-old patient with os Question 8. You are providing nursing care for a patient with carpal tunnel syndrome CTS who is preparing for surgery. Which intervention should you delegate to the nursing assistant? A. Initiate placement of a splint for immobilization during the day. B. Assess the patient's wrist and hand for discoloration and brittle nails. C. Assist the patient with daily self-care measure. Question 10. The patient is scheduled for endoscopic carpal tunnel release surgery in the morning. What key point will you be sure to teach the patient? A. 
pain and numbness will be experienced for several days to weeks. b. Immediately after surgery, the patient will no longer need assistance. c. After surgery, the dressing will be large with dots of drainage. d. After surgery, the pain and paresthesia will no longer be present. Question 1. You are initiating a nursing care plan for a patient with osteoporosis. All of these nursing interventions apply to the nursing diagnosis risk for falls. Which intervention should you delegate to the nursing assistant? A. Identify environmental factors that increase risk for falls. B. Monitor gait, balance, and fatigue level with Question 11. As charge nurse you assign the nursing care of a patient who has just returned from open carpal tunnel release surgery to an experienced LPN, LVN, who will perform under the supervision of an RN. Which of the following instructions will you provide for the LPN, LVN? Choose all that apply. A. Check the patient's vital signs every 15 minutes in the first hour. B. Check the dressing for drainage and tightness. C. Elevate the patient's hand above the heart. D. The patient will no longer need pain medication. E. Check the neurovascular status of the fingers every hour. Question 2. You are preparing to teach a newly diagnosed patient with osteoporosis about strategies to prevent falls. Which of these points will you be sure to include? Choose all that apply. A. Wear a hip protector when ambulating. B. Remove throw rugs and other obstacles at home. C. Exercise will help build your strength. D. You should expect a few bumps and bruises when you go home. E. When you are tired. Answer. B. Hand movements, including heavy lifting, may be restricted for 4-6 weeks after surgery. Patients experience discomfort for weeks to months after surgery. The surgery is not always a cure. In some cases, CTS may recur months to years after surgery. Focus. Prioritization. Question 2. You are preparing to teach a newly diagnosed patient with osteoporosis about strategies to prevent falls. Which of these points will you be sure to include? Choose all that apply. A. Wear a hip protector when ambulating. B. Remove throw rugs and other obstacles at home. C. Exercise will help build your... Question 10. The patient is scheduled for endoscopic carpal tunnel release surgery in the morning. What key point will you be sure to teach the patient? A. Pain and numbness will be experienced for several days to weeks. B. Immediately after surgery, the patient will no longer need assistance. C. After surgery, the dressing will be large with dots of dr Answer. B. Hand movements. Answer, B. 
Fat embolism syndrome is a serious complication that is often the result of fractures of long bones. The earliest manifestation of this is altered mental status caused by low arterial oxygen level. The nurse would want to know about and treat the pain, but it is not life-threatening. The nurse would also want to know about the blood pressure and that the patient voided, however, neither of these pieces of information is urgent. Focus, Prioritization, Delegation, Supervision Answer, C. The patient with a tight cast is at risk for circulation impairment and peripheral nerve damage. While all of the other patient's concerns are important and the nurse will want to see them as soon as possible, none of their concerns is urgent. Focus, Prioritization Question 16 a patient with a fractured fibula is receiving skeletal traction and has skeletal pins in place. You instruct the nursing assistant to immediately report which of the following? A. The patient wants to change position in bed. B. There is a small amount of clear fluid on the pin sites. C. The traction weights are resting on the floor. D. The patient is complaining of pain and muscle spasm. Answer, B. Fat embolism syndrome is a serious complication that is often the result of fractures of long bones. The earliest manifestation of this is altered mental status caused by low arterial oxygen level. The nurse would want to know about and treat the pain, but it is not life-threatening. The nurse would also want to know about the blood pressure and that the patient voided, however, Neither of these pieces of information is urgent. Focus, Prioritization, Delegation, Supervision Answer, B. Hand movements, including heavy lifting, may be restricted for 4-6 weeks after surgery. Patients experience discomfort for weeks to months after surgery. The surgery is not always a cure. In some cases, CTS may recur months to years after surgery. Focus, Prioritization Answer, C. The patient with a t- Answer, A. Moving from a lying position to a sitting position, then a standing position allows the patient to establish balance prior to standing. Administering pain medication prior to exercising decreases pain with exercise. Explanations about the purpose of the exercise program and proper use of crutches are appropriate interventions with this patient. Focus, Delegation, Supervision <laughs> Answer, B. Monitoring for sufficient tissue perfusion is the priority at this time. Phantom pain is a concern, but is more common as patients with above-the-knee amputations. Early ambulation is a goal, but at this time, the patient is more likely to be engaged in muscle strengthening exercises. 
Elevation of the residual limb on a pillow is controversial because it may promote knee flexion contracture. Focus, Delegation, Supervision Answer, C. The patient with a tight cast is at risk for circulation impairment and peripheral nerve damage. While all of the other patient's concerns are important and the nurse will want to see them as soon as possible, none of their concerns is urgent. Focus, Prioritization Answer, A. Moving from a lying position to a sitting position, then a standing position allows the patient to establish balance prior to standing. Administering pain medication prior to exercising decreases pain with exercise. Explanations about the purpose of the exercise program and proper use of crutches are appropriate interventions with this patient. Focus, Delegation, Supervision Question 20. During morning care, the patient with a below-the-knee amputation asks the nursing assistant about prostheses. How should you instruct the nursing assistant to respond? A. You should get a prosthesis so that you can walk again. B. Wait and ask your doctor that question next time he comes in. C. It's too soon to be worrying about getting a prosthesis. D. I'll ask the nurse to come in and discuss this with you. Answer, C. The patient with a tight cast is at risk for circulation impairment and peripheral nerve damage. While all of the other patient's concerns are important and the nurse will want to see them as soon as possible, none of their concerns is urgent. Focus, Prioritization Answer, B. Hand movements. Answer, pressure and pain may be due to increased compartment pressure and indicate the serious complication of acute compartment syndrome. This is urgent. If not treated, cyanosis, tingling, numbness, paresis, and severe pain occur. Focus, prioritization. Question 2. You are preparing to teach a newly diagnosed patient with osteoporosis.